Hello everyone, I'm your host Sean McAvoy and welcome to this year's first installment of the Warrior Walkthrough. Unlike last year, this year we'll be running bi-weekly sports shows with campus news shows happening on our off week so we can keep all of you updated on everything campus sports and news. First, let's send it over to MC Sports correspondent Bailey Parks who will give us this week's top athletic stories on campus. Bailey? Thanks Sean. It was a busy weekend here for the Warriors Athletics, starting off with men's soccer who had their senior day game against the Mount St. Mary's Mountaineers, and oh boy, what a game. The Warriors beat the Mountaineers 7-0, giving the Warriors another conference win and the perfect senior day to celebrate. And we had men's hockey face off against BU in a two-game series. Friday night's game was held here at home at Lawler Arena, with the Warriors winning 3-2, making it the first win against BU at home since 2018, and the Warriors' first ranking win this season. Unfortunately, the boys couldn't pull out the win on Saturday as they played at BU, losing 6-8. Back to you, Sean. Thank you for the update, Bailey. It's great to see all of our teams doing great as we wrap up the fall season and head into winter sports. Double mic'd up on now we're back with a familiar segment of Mic'd Up, where we visit different teams around campus and see what it's like with an athlete during practice. This time around, we'll be taking a peek into what a Merrimack College dance team practice is like with Kaylee Patrickwin. Let's listen in. Double mic'd up on a Tuesday. It's Wednesday. Oh, it wasn't plugged in. <laughs> oh, no. That would be what? I do want to play this with you. <laughs> uh, well, you're gonna be in it because I'm here. Now you're on it. Wave to the camera. Can you hear us? Yeah, you can hear everything I've said. Chris, don't put this whole thing in there, please. I'm begging you. Oh, dang it! Oh, I can't. Oh, that's why. What? Oh, see it. I wonder if it's catching the wind. Belly button to the. My belly button goes too far. This thing has a big body. This thing. How do I stand up? 22 minutes. Oh god. Oh god. I don't think I want mine on camera. I'm gonna go behind you if you're doing it again so that I'm not like full flown to the camera. Yo, what's up? <laughs> Let's flip it real quick from Air Math Athletics to a more national sports focus with Nicole Fasciano. What's up, Warriors? I'm Nicole Fasciano, and today we are bringing you the latest national sports updates in New England. To start things off, the Patriots are coming off of a huge 54-13 win over the New York Jets this past Sunday. Mac Jones had a huge game as he threw for 307 passing yards for the offense, which is the most the team has been able to put up during the regular season so far. The Patriots will visit the Los Angeles Chargers this Sunday, a team led by quarterback Justin Herbert, who has accumulated 1,700 passing yards so far this season and is projected to keep up with that pace. The Bruins are just starting their NHL season and currently are 3-2. There haven't been many notable change-ups in the starting line for the Bees, but one big difference we have seen this season is goaltender Linus Olmark in the net instead of Jeremy Swayman. Head coach Bruce Cassidy had a few things to say when it came to improvements from his last three starts and how he hopes Allmark can bring some urgency to the beginning of the game. Cassidy told reporters, you want to see that first stop in the first period. There's a lot of hockey left, but that's one that gives them a little bit of life. There can't be one of those every game. Make the saves you're supposed to. Then when it's crunch time, do what you have to do to win. The Celtics are 2-3 and three on the NBA season so far and struggling to find their groove. With Al Horford back in the lineup and new offensive momentum coming from Dennis Schroeder, the team has been clearly playing around with the rotations, trying to see what's working and what's not. However, Jalen Brown exceeded expectations against the New York Knicks during the home opener as he put up a whopping 46 points. Well, that's all we have for you today for a New England sports update. Reporting for MCTV Sports, I'm Nicole Fasciano. See you next time. Now let's take a look at another familiar piece that some of you may remember from last year. That's right, Fantasy Factor with Matt Gagnon and Mike Legage, where they go over different segments for fantasy football to try and help your teams out. Guys? Thanks, Sean. Welcome to Fantasy Factor. I'm Mike, he's Matt, and let's get right into it. My start of the week is Chuba Hubbard of the Carolina Panthers. Filling in for Christian McCaffrey, he's been getting a lot of the Panthers' offensive load especially with Sam Darnold's recent, recent struggles. He certainly had on and off games, um, but I expect Hubbard to have a good week against a weak Atlanta defense. 
Playing the Falcons with a struggling quarterback is a perfect opportunity to give your running back the opportunity to take the game for you. He's projected 15.5 points by ESPN for this week. I don't know if that'll happen, um, but I would expect at least over 10 points for this running back in a potential flex spot this week if you need one. Um, now, Mike, before we get to our pick'em game of the week, why don't you tell our lovely fantasy viewers who your, MT, uh, who your MVP is on your fantasy team at this point in the season. So my MVP of the season to date is uh, 49ers wide receiver Debo Samuel. We've talked about him a few times on the show so far. He's averaging over 21 points per game in PPR scoring. He is the leading receiver on my team in terms of total points and is the third leading scorer on my team behind only the quarterbacks, Mahomes and Hurts, and is only averaging two less points per game than Mahomes. In a down, I mean, it's a down season for Mahomes, but still, that's crazy. And Samuel is carrying the load is a major part of the reason why I'm currently third in my league with a record of four and three. Now, Matt, who is the MVP of your team to date? My MVP of my team this season is uh, Ezekiel Elliott so far on the Dallas Cowboys. Aside from a weak first week, the former Ohio State running back is getting a, between 17 to 25 points a game. I feel like Elliott gets a quite a bit of scrutiny around the league by analysts and whatnot, um, but he's always fairly consistent. Hopefully I'm not jinxing him right now, but it's definitely been a start for every, every week this season which is great, especially when some of my other running backs are pretty shaky. It's nice to be able to rely on Zeke, um, just for my team. All right, guys, that's all we have for Fantasy Factor today. For the full show, click the link below. Now we send you back to Strawn in the studio. That's all the time we have for this week's installment of the Warrior Walkthrough. Make sure to stay tuned for our next show in two weeks, as well as for our campus news show this next week. As always, I'm your host, Sean McAvoy, and go have a week, Warriors.